Now, usually applications in, include word problems. And yeah, there are some word problems in this Pythagorean theorem business, but um, there's not a lot of word problems. So the Pythagorean theorem only applies to right triangles. And when we say a right triangle here, what we're re really referring to is a 90 degree angle. Now, of course, there can only be one 90 degree angle in a triangle. I said, of course, making a huge assumption. If you didn't know that, don't worry about it. But this little mark right here in a triangle, if it's shown, then you know that it's 90 degrees. Now, for the sake of this uh, particular section of this module, sometimes they may not actually show that, uh, may not show that right there, okay? But since this is the Pythagorean theorem, remember, it only applies to right triangles. So even if they don't show that mark, we're going to make the assumption that it should be there so that we know that we are dealing with a right triangle, okay? Now, right triangles are unique. And so, well, the math people, they're unique. So uh, we, gave, we gave names to the side lengths of a triangle that is a right triangle. And yeah, of course, we had to name the triangle. So naturally, we have to name the parts of the triangle so that we know what we're talking about. So the two legs right here, as we saw there, remember this uh, little mark right there? These are what we call legs. The two sides lengths that make up the right angle, the 90 degree angle there, are what we call the legs. The other side is called the hypotenuse. And if you have trouble remembering the hypotenuse, I don't really care if you know how to spell it, but uh, if you have trouble remembering the hypotenuse, just there's a key and pill skit on it, and you can watch it. It's great. Okay, but the Pythagorean theorem will only apply as long as we're dealing with right triangles like this. But you're going to hear in this, in this section, I'll always refer to side lengths as legs and hypotenuse, most of the time at least, okay? So hypotenuse is the side opposite of the, of the right angle. We call that opposite. It's kind of, I think of it kind of like it's pointing at the hypotenuse. And uh, just kind of as a little factoid, um, hypotenuse is the longest side of a right triangle. Not that I think you care. I think if you're ever on Jeopardy and they're like, hey, whatever's the long side, <laughs> long side of a right triangle, now you know. Now you know, okay? Now, the Pythagorean theorem. This is the Pythagorean theorem right here, kind of, okay? So the Pythagorean theorem is, um, it's more of a conditional statement. It's a if, if you have a right triangle, then you have this relationship with the legs and the hypotenuse, okay? Leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. And if we really wanted to go the distance to make this abstract and sound really nerdy, because if you said leg squared plus leg squared, people would be like, what the crap are you talking about? But the, the moment you make this a squared plus b squared equals c squared, they're like, oh, now it's Einstein kind of stuff. You know what I'm saying? But um, it's just leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. That's, that's really the way that I like to look at it. And for these problems, we're going to be using principles of equality to solve, just like we saw on that last section. Uh, of course, since we're dealing with exponents of 2 on this, we're going to expect to see some of these relationships solved with square roots. Oh, so the Pythagorean theorem, it comes from ancient Greece. Yes, the Egyptians had it before the Greeks, but... Um, the, the Greeks made it famous through Pythagoras, who was a Greek dude. He was like the king nerd of the time. Like, I don't know if that's a good title or a bad title, but like, um, like they, would get, they would have parties back in those days. And they'd say, you know, they'd put up flyers on light posts and stuff. They'd say, come to our party. We're going to do some math. And people would actually show up. Like, what the crap is going on here, right? But they didn't have Xboxes or PlayStation, so I guess that kind of makes sense. But they would get together, and they would uh, eat triangle-shaped sandwiches and do... Pythagorean theorem all day long. Um, ironically, Pythagoras murdered a dude because they, they had a disagreement. And history, at least history <laughs> these days, shows that uh, Pythagoras was wrong. So he killed a guy mm. and was wrong. But so what was whatever. The it was high stakes back in those days. You couldn't be wrong about stuff like that because you'd lose your job, I guess. But, um, but yeah, that shows like, you what, what can happen when a group... Becomes too powerful there. They're all dead. All right, find the length of the hypotenuse. Find the length of the hypotenuse of the right triangle picture below. Round the answer to the nearest hundredth. Here we go. So it's saying to round to the nearest hundredth, which uh, means I'm going to use the calculator to get that decimal, just like we saw on that last example with the really ugly decimal, right? So 
on this one. Remember the Pythagorean theorem? Here it is again, right there, right? So leg squared plus leg squared needs to equal the hypotenuse squared. We're solving for the hypotenuse, and remember, just in case you've forgotten, the legs are represented with the letters A and B, and the hypotenuse is represented with the letters C. Why not L's and H's? Well, L's kind of look like, lowercase L's looks like ones, and H's, I don't know. I don't know why not, but whatever. So this one, of course, we can see, and I've purposely color-coded this so we understand that we are dealing with two legs. How do we know that those are the two legs? Because there's the right angle right there. Remember, the legs make up the right angle. So these two values, and it doesn't matter which order you put them in, a leg is a leg. So uh, the first leg, I'm just going to put 14 first, and then the 10 second. Now this means that if we squared these and then added those squares, then we end up with the hypotenuse as a square as well. And there's an interesting proof on that. Uh, my understanding is it came from President Garfield, whatever your political affiliation, I don't really care. Not that you, most people know who President Garfield is, but he's dead too. Yeah, that's in any lot. case, but most of those guys are dead too. So in any case, so I'm going to go on my calculator, right? And uh, I'm going to do this part by part. So you could say I'm mean, just going to do 14 squared plus 10 squared in the calculator, but I want to see this stuff, okay? So 14 to the power of 2 is 196, and then 10 to the power of 2 is just 10 times 10. It's 100. So, of course, if you, add, if you were to add these two together, you'd get 296, okay? So 296 needs to equal C, our hypotenuse, to the power of 2, okay? Now, like we saw, well, I guess we didn't see any like this in the last section, but we've seen equations like this to solve. You just need a square root both sides like this, okay? So what, and, and this, see the square root and the exponent 2 right there, that, they're going to undo each other, which leaves me with just a C value. So in my calculator, I go to the square root of 296, enter. Now, it gives me 2 square root of 74, but it said it wanted the decimal to the nearest hundredth. That's the second decimal place. So I'm going to push the double arrow button just above enter, and it will change that into a decimal for me. So the decimal it's showing me is 17.2046. Uh, I don't really need the 6 either, right? because we just want the hundredths, which is the second decimal place. And this four is less than five, which means that the zero will stay a zero. We don't need to add one to it. I know some of you just write that as 17.2, and that should work, okay? Which means the hypotenuse rounded, and you know, depending on how big the project is, I'm thinking of construction, by the way, but uh, you know, whatever you're doing, do you really need hundredths or thousandths? Because you could go as many decimal places as you need to for further accuracy on this hypotenuse, oh. but there's a point where it becomes kind of obsolete, so there's some significant figures on this one. Not that I think you care, though. Here's one. Now, this one, this one, it, it has the x value there, which is a leg, right? Because, again, the legs are what are the two sides that make up the right angle, which is right here, okay? So with that, take a minute, see if you can find the value of this, of this leg right here, okay? Then we'll do it together. So a quick spoiler alert on this one. Uh, I got, well, rounded to the nearest tenth, I guess, 11.2. Now, keep in mind, once we see word problems with these, there should be some kind of units involved with this, like inches, feet. This one doesn't, though, so there we go. Uh, at least that's what I got. Okay, so let, let's look out and see how we got that. So uh, the equation, we, got, we don't know the first leg. You could say it's the second leg. It's not going to matter. The second one's 10, and then the hypotenuse here is 15, right? So the x as a square and then the 10 as a square, if you add the, those two areas, you'd have the hypotenuse as an area squared too as well, okay? The length squared it gives you the area. So uh, just evaluating this, we got uh, 10 to the power of 2 there, which is 100. 15 to the power of 2, I put that in the calculator, I got uh, 225. Okay, so now we got x squared plus 100 equals 225. And then at this point, I would look to subtract the 100. Okay, so that gives me the x squared, which now equals 125. And then all I did at that point is just square rooted both sides to get rid of that exponent. And that's when I got x equals 11.2, okay? Of course, I got 11.18033989. But rounding to the nearest tenth, and yeah, they did change that. Make sure you pay attention, because I think on the homework, sometimes they do change those around. Not everything is to the tenth, and not everything is to the hundredth.
So just be aware. Again, that has some decimals in it. Uh, I really hope that the other ones wouldn't be so bad right here, but. All right. So Pythagorean theorem, leg squared plus leg squared is hypotenuse squared. And the, leg, the legs are represented by letters A and B in the hypotenuse with usually C. And sometimes they'll even show that in the, in the pictures like this. I'll say uh, you're, it's a C value instead of an X. I like X, but whatever. This one, they gave us both legs there. A uh, leg of 18, 8 and then 15. There we go. And, uh, of course, if I were to add those two squares together, then I would have the hypotenuse as a squared. Uh, but this time it gave us an x value. You could say c on this if you wanted to, but the answer is going to be the same. So let's go and start squaring those. 8 squared is 64, and then 15 squared. We just saw that one, right? 225. So let's go and add those together, and then we should have x squared. Okay? So 64 plus 225. I'm just putting that in my calculator. Again, use that calculator quite a bit if you need to. And, yeah, you could have just plugged this in. Uh, expression in, in the beginning there. But when I combine these, I get 289. And that now will equal x squared. Okay, so last thing I got to do to solve this is to square root both sides to give us just the x. And the square root of 289 is, oh, just 17. That's pretty nice. 815, eight, 17 triangle. Now, just so you understand, not that I think you care, but just so you understand, okay? This, uh, this hypotenuse came out as a whole value, 17. All three values don't have decimals. There's no fractions, no, um, no irrational numbers, no square roots, okay? This is what we call a Pythagorean triple. See what I mean? How that can turn into some serious conversations and some sandwiches. And you could go all night long about talking about mathematics, but... This is a Pythagorean triple. Uh, the most common one is a 3-4-5 triangle, and it can be scaled. Again, if you've worked in construction, you know what I'm talking about. But if not, don't worry about it. All right, given a field, 159 feet by 65 feet, how far is it to walk from one corner to, of the field to the opposite corner to the closest tenth of a foot? No surprise on this one if I said this was the field, and it's not scaled because I don't really care, but 159 feet, 159 feet, and then 65 feet right here, right? It's saying if you walk from one corner to the other like this, what is that distance right there? I'm going to call it C because that's the hypotenuse. See what I'm saying? Because I can go in here and pretty much just say, well, look, I, I don't want to see this other stuff right here, okay? See that? There's a right triangle right there because it's a rectangle, okay? Uh, and so, at this point, we say, now that I know that it's a triangle, actually, that we're dealing with, let's use the Pythagorean theorem. And this side length here is a leg. That's a 159. I'll just make it the first leg because it doesn't matter. 159. And then uh, 65, that would have been the other leg right here. Probably put that on the wrong side. And leg is 65. So, again, if I were to square those and add them together... I should get the hypotenuse, which is that distance to the power of 2. Sorry, should I, I guess I should have made that purple. All right, so uh, this time, because the numbers are going to be pretty big, I'm just going to type that whole uh, expression there. 159 squared plus 65 squared. The calculator knows, and that's what it gives me here. When I combine these, I get 29,506. Now, that would be the same as the hypotenuse as a square. So what do I got to do to solve this? Well, we're just going to square root both sides there, see? Oh, what the heck? There we go. All right, square root of 29,506. Enter. Oh, it already gave me the decimal. C equals 171 point. I got 773. It did say it around to the nearest tenth right there. So 7-7 seven, seven would add 1 to the 7 in the 10th place value, which is 8. And just don't forget to label that up with feet. So it would be, and you could say even approximately because we did round that. If the field was that size, you'd have to walk about 171.8 feet. There's lots of different applications like this. Um, so again, as long as you understand, like even if you need to draw the picture on this stuff, then do it, okay? 
Because if that's what helps you the, to figure that, figure out that you're dealing with the legs on this, they, so then do it, okay? A 12-foot ladder is placed against the building. If the base of the ladder is three feet away from the building, how far up the building will the ladder reach? Now, yeah, um, when we do this kind of stuff in eighth grade, they're like, well, what if the ground is not level? All right. We don't really want to make it that complicated. Okay, so we're going to assume that the ground is level here. And so what we got, we got a building, and then you're going to, you're going to take, a, well, there's the building. Okay, so you got the building right here, and, uh, you know, if you wanted to be like, hey, there's a building, that's fine, too. All right, so then it says uh, you got some kind of ladder leaning up against this building, right? So um, kind of on purpose, I'm going to make this ladder right here. Let's label it, though. Ladder. There we go. And then you got the ground, you know, got some pretty grass right there. But in any case, it says that uh, the base of the ladder is three feet away from the building. That'd be this distance right here. That's three feet, okay? But then it says the ladder itself is 12 feet. So this is 12 feet right there, okay? So when you look at the building, and I guess it doesn't really go up to the top of the building, but whatever. We're just looking at a triangle right here, right? And if I drawn that better, you'd see that it should be a right triangle, okay? So, yeah, sorry about that, but uh, it's still a Pythagorean theorem problem because it's a right triangle, okay? We see a, pi we see a right triangle, we should kind of expect there to be a, uh, whoa, that's kind of big, Pythagorean theorem stuff, okay? Now, we do, we'd have one of the legs is three, but the other one we don't know. I'll just say B. Oh, B for building, that's pretty good. And then the hypotenuse is 12, right? So if I take the two legs as squares and add them together, I should have the hypotenuse as a square. 3 squared is 9, and 12 squared is 144. So 9 plus B squared should equal 144. Uh, I'll subtract uh, 9 on both sides there. And that makes uh, 135. So B squared then equals 135. And then we'll just square root both sides, right? Oh, that's a 135, dang it. There's a 1. Kind of sloppy there, but there's B. Let's see, the square root of 135, i got to use the calculator for that because I can't do it in my head. If you can, that's super impressive. So it gave me 3 square root 15. Again, double arrow button. Set it around to the nearest tenth on this. So I'm going to make it uh, 11 points. I got 61895004. The 6, of course, would just stay a 6. And then again, this is feet, so that's it. Now, if the pitcher helps, then use it. If not, you don't have to. We'll never say you have to use a pitcher, but if it does, then do it. All right, this one's new. This one's new. Very different looking. Try it out, though. See how you do, okay? All right, but we have the two legs, and yeah, the, the triangle's shifted, right? It's kind of just flipped, but the right angle's right here, okay? So we got the two side lengths that are gonna make up the right angle, two legs. One of them is just an X, the other one is an X plus 7. And then the hypotenuse is also a, uh, uh, an expression there, X plus 14. Okay, so again, we, we're going to have to take these and square them. So I'm going to show them like this, and this one like this, okay? And if we were to add those two legs as squares together, we should get the hypotenuse as a square as well, this one. Okay, now again, yeah, it, it, it's good that we had that conversation already. Remember, this is not 7 squared and x squared. No, it is not. You have to actually expand those, expand that, and then do your multiplication, okay? So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to show it as two binomials being multiplied here. x plus 7 and uh, x plus 7, okay? Now, I'm just going to work with this part right here for now. I'll come back to the x plus 14, but I want to see what happens when we multiply these, okay? Uh, so... Uh, you could you could apply the rule, but just as a quick review, um, right? You'd have the you'd have the first x, and you'd have to multiply that by the second set of parentheses, right? To distribute, and then you'd have the positive seven as well. Looking at that one right there, that's transferred down, and then this other binomial, it'll be just distributed in there, okay? So what does that end up being with this first distribution? Do that in a different color. That's x times x, which is x squared, and then x times 7 would be 7x's, and then this other distribution, 7 times x would be 7x, and then 7 times 7, which is 49, okay? 
But then I got these two x, x terms in the middle that can be combined. 7 plus 7 is 14x's. So now we got x squared plus 14x plus 49. And that would be that x plus 7 to the power of 2, okay? But now we got to do it with the x plus 14. So let's go ahead and do that. So yeah, we got x plus 14 multiplied by itself. And if you know the rule, then use it. If not, then, well, I wouldn't recommend it. But it's the same idea on this one. I'm going to take the first x and multiply it by that second set of parentheses there, x plus 14. Uh, but also the positive 14. I'll have to multiply that by also by the same set of parentheses. Okay? Kind of sloppy, but it'll still work. So from the distribution, I've got x times x, which is x squared. And then x times 14, that'd be 14x's. And then over here, another 14x's. And 14 times 14. Calculator time. 14 squared, 196. Positive. Okay, and then again, the two x terms in the middle, 14 plus 14 would be 28x's. So now I got x squared, positive 28x's, plus 196. So what does this amount to at this point? Well, remember, you still got that other x squared there which we'll have to add to this other leg, and then uh, that equals what I have in purple right there, okay? So let's go ahead and combine the x squareds, because we can. We got x squared, that's one x squared, and another x squared, that'd be two x squareds. And then we got uh, the rest of that stuff, uh, plus 14x, plus 49, and then this just equals whatever we have on the right side there. Okay, all right, now, Remember, this is an equation with this trinomial, polynomial stuff. So I need it to equal zero, but right now it just equals this purple stuff. So I'm going to have to use some principles of equality to uh, kind of simplify this, okay? So here we go. Let's see if we can make this work. I'm going to put the zero here on the right. So it should equal zero on the end, so I'd have to subtract x squared from both sides. And if it helps you to see that one, then see it. 2x is minus 2x squared minus 1x squared would be just x squared. And then the 28x, I'll have to zero that out by subtracting 28x's, but from both sides. And yeah, that zeroed out both of these, but 14x's minus 28x's would be negative 14x's. But also subtract 196 from both sides. 196. So what is that? 49 minus 196. Enter. That's a negative 147. Okay. That's kind of ugly. Um, but let's see, right? So this is, we have a leading coefficient that's 1 right now. Let's see if we can pull anything out of that 147 right there. Uh, hmm. Well, 147 is a negative 147. So I said I know it's divisible by 3. That'd be 3 and 49. 147, that means it's divisible by 7 as well. That'd be 7 and, that'd be, uh, what the heck? 147, 7 and 21. Oh, that'll do it. Holy smokes. It's a pretty ugly number there, the, that negative 147. 7 and uh, 7 times 21 is 47. And now the 14 is negative, though, so I'd have to make the 21 the negative on that, which means the two values that I'm looking at would be uh, x plus 7 and then x minus 21 there. Didn't expect that, but there it is. We got this equals 0. Uh, and as much work as that was, we're not done yet because we <laughs> still got to solve this sucker. Uh, well, what this means then is, remember, we've got the two factors. If we could just make them equal zero, then it would be fine. So that means if I can make the x plus 7 equal zero, then it should give us a true statement. So I'll subtract 7 from both sides. And you get an x value that's, well, negative 7. What if we did, uh, what about x minus 21? We could make that equal zero too, right? But then you'd have to add 21 to both sides. Then you get x equals 21, okay? Now, we talked about this before. You've got to make sure that your answer is going to work in the original equation, right? Hmm. And this is, again, it's kind of ugly, but let's just check to see what happens. So I'm, going to, I'm going to start with negative 7, okay? So I say uh, negative 7, negative 7. I got that in parentheses, negative. Uh, you need to put negative 7 squared. 
plus, uh, and I got another set of parentheses here. I'm, I got this, this would be negative seven plus seven squared as well, right? So negative seven plus uh, seven, close parentheses squared. And when I push enter on the left side, just by testing negative seven, I got uh, 49, okay? Well, what about the other side? Well, that would be um, negative seven plus 14, close parentheses squared. Uh, that's also 49, so that looks like that one's gonna be good. This one would be one of the solutions there. Let's see if the other one works though, okay? So this would be 21 squared plus parentheses 21 plus seven, close parentheses squared. And when I push enter there, for the green 21, I got uh, 1225. What about the other one? That'd be 21 plus 14, close parentheses squared, enter 1225. Well, for some reason, I was not expecting both answers to work, but it looks like they do. So, whatever. Yes, here, here is why the negative 7 does not work. Yes, checking is good. Negative 7 doesn't work. Here's why. Because if you made negative 7 right here, put negative 7 into this, you get, a, you get a zero side length, which you can't have, right? And you could even say, well, you can't have a negative side length either. That's fair. Um, but, yeah, it would make this this side length just a zero. And now you're not looking at a triangle anymore. You'd be looking at a line. And that's no good. So that's why the negative seven doesn't work. You know, be careful with that by checking just the equation. I, I really, like you're saying, I should have checked the triangle right there. Um, and you could say you're checking the equation too, but yeah, the 49s, even though that works in the equation, it does not work with the pitcher this one right so we got to find the unknown length that's fine it's a and yeah it is one of the legs on this one so Pythagorean theorem this one though we do have one of the legs at 11 the other one's an a you, you can if you switch these around it's not gonna make a difference and then we also have the hypotenuse at the square root of 157 okay so if I were to square the 11 and also the A and add those together, I should have the 157. I'll put that in parentheses just to emphasize what's happening here. We're squaring that whole thing, right? Now, the square root of 157 squared, you could even plug this into the calculator to tell you it's 157, but remember this exponent of two kind of undoes this square root right there. And then we got 11 to the power of two, which is 121, okay? So if I add that to my A squared, I should get a total of 157. So then I'll subtract 121 from both sides, just solving an equation, you know. So 636, oh, that's going to be nice. So now A squared should equal 36. And yeah, when I square root these, I get A equals 6. Oh, this one, it, it didn't label the hypotenuse in centimeters, but yeah, it looks like the one leg is labeled 11 centimeters, so I'll, I'll label this one six centimeters. Okay, but yeah, will this work? Well, let's see, uh, uh, 11 squared is 121, plus uh, six squared is 36, yeah, it's 157. Um, there we go, that was the hypotenuse as a square. You could take the square root of 157, but I think that's gonna be a pretty ugly number. Square root uh, 157. Yeah, pretty ugly, right?